Yeah. Alright guys, how you doing? So I am currently in the transition between using a mouse and a T-Flight HOTAS X, which was kindly sent to me by Thrustmaster. Now I'm really enjoying the immersion factor, the fun factor of using the joystick and the throttles. Just it's out of this world compared to to the mouse. However, I'm having one or two accuracy issues. I just can't get the accuracy, you know, really anywhere near what I've got on the mouse. There must be some way to fix it though, right? Well, Thrustmaster themselves have got this target software, which does just that. It helps, you know, the sensitivity and stuff around, you know, you can set power curves and that for, for, for your stick. The problem is though, it only works with the Warthog and the Cougars and the T16000M. It doesn't actually work with the Hotas X. There must be some way to fix that though, right? There's always people out there who are writing drivers and stuff like that for these things. Well, I had a look and I've been looking at it most of the day, in fact, trying to figure this one out. It's been it's been quite some task. However, I finally found this. www.zdocproject.com forward slash joystickcurves.html Some Ukrainian guys written this excellent little program. This is all it is. It's just that if you, if you go here, you can scroll down, and that's that's all the instructions you really need to get this, you know, downloaded. Don't worry about this curve thing here. I'm gonna I'll explain that in the video. It's really very simple. I've never been very keen on these things either, but I just forced myself to figure it out, and really incredibly simple. Right. So if you scroll down and click on this download to download this VJoy, which is a virtual joystick driver, version one point two. But before you get there, though. If you go into your start menu and type in joy.cpl and click on that, this brings up your game controllers in Windows. It should be the same in most versions of Windows. You can see here I've got a T-Flight Hotas X. If I click on properties, I can move my stick around and stuff and uh, you can see that working there. right? But that just shows that that's a controller that I have currently got installed on Windows. Now, click my downloads. Just click on next, accept agreement, next, 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 install. You don't need to tick this always trust, just click install. And now you should see two virtual joysticks appearing here because it installs two. Click on finish. Right. These are basically the same sort of thing, except the setup has 32 buttons and you've got all the axes. You can use these for absolutely any joystick you can imagine under the sun, basically. I just wanted to show that because if these don't show up when you've installed that, then it means that the virtual joysticks haven't been set up. You need to either uninstall the program, try it again, or, or figure out why that's happened. So click on OK. Right, next thing you're going to download is the application right at the very bottom. We'll run that. Click install it, downloads it to install it. Right, and this is joystick curves. It's actually very simple, there's not a great deal to it. Here is where you basically set your curves and set up the joysticks and this is where you can see what the results of that are. So the first thing you're probably going to want to do is set a profile, so just click up there and type in, I'm going to type in Elite Dangerous. Now, you've got source and a destination. Your source is going to be your physical device, which is, in my case, the T-Flight Hotas X. You can also use a mouse, whatever, you know, whatever you've got plugged in there. Now, the first access that we will set will be Roll. On your destination, Virtual Joystick, VJoy Virtual Joystick number one, and again, the access is going to be set to Roll. Now, over here, you've got a dark and a light crosshair and a dark and a, and a light line. You can't see the dark one because the, the, the light one's over the top of it. If I move left and right in the row, you can see that the light crosshair is moving left and right. You can't see the dark one because it's underneath it. Now, the way it fix this is, you move these squares down. I'll explain what these actually mean as well. Try and move it down until you can make some kind of curve that makes some sort of sense. Right, so that's some kind of 
pretty bad curve that I've created. I'll just try and fix it up a bit. Right, so there's a slightly better looking curve. Now, if I go back and move my roll on my joystick, you can see now the light one lags behind the dark one. The dark one, you can see it underneath now. When I move to the left, at the start, now what that's actually doing is near the center of the joystick, you're getting more fine control for the same type of movement. The dark one is the actual physical joystick that hasn't been modified. And the light, the light crosshair is the virtual joystick. So this, this is the difference from the same input, basically. Me pushing left on, on the joystick is giving out two completely different outputs depending on whether or not it's the actual physical joystick or the virtual joystick. And this basically, these red squares correlate to, to these circles here, yeah? So like this first internal circle, you've got one, two, three, four, five red squares, yeah? So this first like, circle here is the first red square. The second one's the second one. So like, if I pull these all the way down, let's go like that. So it's completely flat and then suddenly a curve towards the end. Now if I move left on the joystick, you see that it's not even moving in the, the virtual joystick yet until I reach that, almost reach that third, third circle and then it catches right up. And that's exactly what you want. Maybe not exactly like this, yeah? You want something curved like I, like I had to start with. But maybe you want to, you know, really low down to start off with so that, that you're really close in movements, close to the center, give you that bit more sensitivity, yeah? Bit more accuracy close in, but it catches up towards the end so that you still get the full range of movement so long as you push the joystick right to the very end. So that's the roll setup. Doing the other axes is really simple. You just need to right click on this, copy curve to pitch. Now, again, you need to select the whole task set. You need to select virtual joystick one and pitch. Right click on pitch, copy curve to yaw. Virtual joystick one, yaw. Now you can also use the slider so you could actually Copy the curve to the throttle as well if you wanted. And you could also do the slider on the back of the T-Flight. Now, as far as these this curve goes, this is the thing that you need to figure out by yourself. I'm probably going to prefer something a little bit like this, maybe even, maybe even tighter than this towards the bottom. So that it really goes slow to start with, but towards the end, it picks up and you still get the full range of movement. So look at that. If you do move it, remember, you're still, you're still going to want to have to copy the curve everywhere else, yeah? So copy curve to pitch, copy to roll, copy curve to yaw, and it should all be the same curve now. Oh yeah, you've got this preserve axis range. Just t turn that off, you don't need that. Right, you can also import and export. If you want to export the profile, go ahead and do that. Now, the final thing you want to do with joystick curves is go into settings and... You have minimize on close, on start automatically on Windows start, start minimized, all that stuff, so that it minimizes to the system tray down here when it starts up. Because you're going to have to have this running before you actually play the game. I'll just show you that now. Right, so here we are in the Elite controls. We're just going to set the preset to Thrustmaster T-Flight. Put on that widget. As soon as you do that, it switches to custom, yeah? Now we're in between the two Magellanic Clouds. If I roll... Right, you can see that's roll. It basically, it's a sort of uniform roll no matter how... how hard I push the joystick. If, if I'm really light touch, I can get it to roll that little bit slower left and right. But it takes a very, you know, very sensitive touch to do that. Looking at the yaw, even the slightest yaw, it's pretty fast. It does really kind of speed up quite a lot. And the pitch is basically just going to be the same. Now, if I go back into options, 
This is how you set up your joystick curve. Into controls. Now, again, we're on custom. What you need to do for your initial setup is, I'll go into my third screen because this is where I've got joystick curves now. There's a button down here or a checkbox that says virtual axis test loop. So you're on roll and I'm going to click on this button, virtual axis test loop. And you can see it starts rolling itself. I'm not, uh, there's no input from me from the joystick. This is, this cross here is now rolling itself across the center. What you need to do now is go back into the game, come down to the roll axis and you click on this joy X axis. Now normally it would wait for an input for you to push on the joystick, but because the joystick curve program is, is already doing a sort of virtual roll, then it will, the, the game will automatically pick that up. As soon as you click on this, there you go, it just did that itself. Back to the third screen again, and we're going to click on pitch. As you see, it's doing the pitch virtual axis test loop now up and down. So we'll go back to Elite. Click on the pitch axis. And the game automatically finds the pitch up and down that Joystick Curves is doing automatically. And finally, we're going to go to the yaw. You can see down the bottom. Back into Elite and click on the yaw axis. It's got the same name, but it is actually coming from joystick curves instead of the actual joystick, the actual T-Flight. Now, you can do that with your throttle as well if you want to find something like that. Right, now this always happens the first time you do this. You kind of lose control, but you can regain it. You just have to sort of fiddle about it. I don't know why it does that, but that's what it does. Now, I'm going to go back to my joystick curves. If I pull up the joystick again, you can see what it's doing in the real joystick and what it's doing in the virtual joystick. Now, this is going to be the exact same in the game. Right, now, the last time I tried this, I was finding it hard to get really fine control on stuff like the yaw. So, let's see what it's like now. If I just, you know, very fine control, turn left, left yaw on the stick. You can see I can get way better fine control now. You can get very fine control, in fact, if, if, if you get it right. But you've got the range here. Twist it right to the end door and it goes to the full yaw. Again, you just have to play about the curve until you get that perfect for how you want it. Now, the roll's exact same. A small left turn on the roll. And you can see there, very, very slow rolling now that I just couldn't, I wasn't able to do that, you know, in the other setting without the joystick curve. So this is all about fine tuning, getting that fine control. But still retaining, you know, the ability to yaw fully to the right if you need to by pushing the joystick all the way to the right or, or all the way to the left. Again, the pitch is going to be exactly the same. Very slow pitch up. This is the sort of pitch rates that you'd get on a mouse. With very fine control. All the way up to the full speed pitch. And that's how simple it is. Now this is gonna, this should really increase my accuracy by quite a lot. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be able to get the same accuracy that I've, I've had in the mouse. Maybe it's just the fact that I've been using the mouse for, you know, many, many years as well. But this is certainly gonna help. Just the simple fact that the movements towards the center now give you that little bit more fine control. You're basically turning the joystick into a virtual mouse in a lot of ways because this is the way that, you know, the, I was, you know, doing it with the mouse. You, you need to get the full range, but you want your center movements to be that little bit more precise. And hopefully it'll be laughing soon with my Hotas X.